going to be talking about APIs as agents of change. So, um, uh, Eric. Hello. Bonjour. Great to see you again. <laughs> great to see you. We, we, you, we can't uh, meet up in person this time, but it's yeah. good to share a stage in any case. We'll, we'll catch up in a way. Absolutely. The, the okay. Do you want to share your screen? We've got a really active um, discussion here in our chat. So people, please keep keep the uh, conversation going and be ready for questions for Eric as well. Okay, wonderful. You, Eric, I'm going to jump off and let you jump into it. Excellent. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. So yeah, today uh, we're going to talk about how I see APIs uh, act as a change agent within organizations. Um, so the first thing is uh, to, to look at what people um, are looking for in organizations. So everybody's looking for a business platform on the business side. They all want to uh, benefit from the hyper growth and the uh, no uh, marginal cost benefits of a uh, business platform like uh, Amazon or Netflix. And then on the techn technology side, well, same thing. Everybody wants a platform. They want uh, a platform because they appreciate the uh, hyperscale uh, feature of platforms. They appreciate the fact that it's robust, like an Amazon or Netflix. So what we need to do is to reconcile uh, those two views uh, of a business platform and a technology platform. And my talk today is going to be about uh, sharing recipes uh, that I've gathered, speaking with uh, XY customers, on how to reconcile those two views in order for the company to create an open platform of success. So let's have a look uh, in more details at the, the two views we need to reconcile. On the left side, we have uh, uh, Clark. Uh, Clark Kent uh, is uh, typically a business line manager or general manager, or he works in finance or in HR uh, or in operations. What he cares about is the budget, uh, the PL, growth, uh, customer satisfaction, cost savings and uh, risk avoidance. On the right side, we have Superman. Uh, we can be the uh, API product manager, uh, the API program manager, or the platform manager. Uh, he typically cares about the stack, uh, the scale, uh, the availability, and the speed of executing. And uh, as you all know, we want to make sure that they realize that uh, they need to uh, reconcile in order to be successful. So let's have a first look at the, the four superpowers uh, of APIs, uh, which are ways for APIs to really impact an organization. The first one is for APIs to facilitate for organizations to create a vision that is based on an open consideration of the world and of their ecosystem, which I will call an open vision. The second uh, superpower of APIs is uh, the, the ability to create super experience, uh, as we uh, just described uh, earlier, and uh, we'll go into more details. The third one is the ability for APIs to break walls, not only in uh, to break the monolith, but also to break walls within organizations. And the fourth power is uh, that APIs are a way for your platform to become a superstar. And this is where we will uh, conclude with uh, adoption consideration. So uh, open vision. Um, when it comes to creating a, a strategy, what you should leverage is the uh, open vision superpower of APIs. Um, take an example, BMW Connected Drive. Uh, they provide a service to their members, uh, which is uh, an experience. For example, you can uh, lock or unlock your car uh, from your cell phone. Um, this is uh, something that is enriched with the, uh, the uh, sensors and devices that are shared with the consent of users uh, to uh, data exchange. This data exchange can, can also be used in order to enrich the experience that is provided to the members of the ecosystem of this connected drive by providing music, not directly, you know, BMW is not in music, 
So they selected in, uh, partners to integrate, like Deezer and Napster, so that they could augment the experience of their members. They also augment this experience uh, with community providers. In case you're a fan of Apple, you can, uh, you can add the Apple CarPlay preparation. And finally, they are distributing this connected drive uh, through the usual you know, setting of the car, but also through car sharing systems like DriveNow uh, that act as distributor for members to discover this experience so that the community in itself grow. Uh, these are the four areas that we see in any uh, platform. And I, I invite you to have a conversation between Clark and Superman on the vision that you want to create for your open platform. And this is a, this is a template. Uh, think about the experience that you want to give to your members, starting by what are members in our community. Think about the providers you want to connect those members to in order to enrich this, um, um, this experience through a marketplace. The, the features you want to leverage from third-party APIs and integrate as part of this experience. And finally, think how you're going to grow your community by leveraging some distributors that can be in your ecosystem, in your industry, or in other industries. So this is a template that uh, typically carries interesting conversations between uh, all the people interested in the success of uh, the platform of your company uh, and a, a great note for reconciling these, uh, these views. The second power is uh, the ability to create a super experience. And this is another area where the two concerns meet on the platform. So what do we want to create as product managers? We want to create um, experience that are uh, linked to moments in life of our uh, customers. So as a product manager, this is what I want to create. Uh, this is uh, something that I, I want to be as precise as possible, given the moment in life of my uh, customer and their journey. So for example, uh, you take a, a bank like Sparebank One, they wanted to create an experience totally differentiated about uh, what happens when somebody wants to finance its, um, its uh, solar panel. What they did uh, by leveraging APIs uh, is that they leveraged not only the, the current situation of their customer with a mortgage API, but also they created a specialized loan API so that the experience given to the uh, end user that wants to uh, finance his solar panel is seamless. This is exactly the kind of experience you want to create as a product manager. Now, for you to be able to create those APIs that drive those experience, uh, you need to consider APIs as a product. So uh, another discussion between Clark and, and uh, Superman would be, OK, APIs are a product. A product caters for uh, consumers. They are sold in store, and uh, they are material. Same with APIs, same thing. It's just different uh, kind of consumers. Consumers are uh, uh, apps that are programmatically consuming your uh, service. You are being distributed by developers. So this is uh, the, the crowd that you need to really care for and provide a, a good experience to. And your product is the API. So knowing that, uh, the, the API is your uh, Campbell can. Um, what you need to do is to look at the four elements of a good product, which is the entire product mix, which is not only the features that you need to design, but also where you place them, the promotion you give to them that we'll see at the end, and the price. So let's let's look into the, the pricing discussion, which again is a good way to reconcile the views of uh, Clark and Superman. So uh, in, in API terms, we talk a lot about, uh, in, instead of pricing, we talk about monetization of my APIs. Um, so the first thing you need to realize is that monetization is typically not direct. Direct monetization it, where you're being built for the consumption you make of your API as a developer is a minority. I say less than 5% and only a few companies do it. The bulk of the value that is uh, created with APIs 
And the, the, the pricing that you should think of is internal and based on bidding that is being made by existing lines of business and existing models. So this is indirect, which is 95% of the overall consumption. So when you look at indirect uh, monetization, you need to think about, of course, uh, the impact that your APIs have on the revenue growth of the line of business that you support. But also you need to think about the potential cost savings that you're bringing to the uh, uh, to this line of business because this is value as well. And also the risk. Because if you're uh, lowering risk for a line of business, uh, it needs to be acknowledged as part of uh, the value that APIs bring to uh, uh, to the to the table for the organization. So this is a table we created at Axway for uh, helping companies meter their um, uh, the value of their platform. As you can see, uh, there is value in client acquisition. You know, you can uh, reduce the cost of acquisition of customers. You can increase the the number of partners or reduce the time to uh, market to a new channel. You can create a marketplace. But also on the cost saving side, you can actually generate money and monetize by cutting redundancies um, thanks to the uh, reusability that Maxim was talking about earlier. Um, you can increase productivity thanks to uh, the experience you're providing. You can cut marginal cost. All those dollars that you've helped generate for the company are part of your indirect monetization. And finally, on mitigation, let's take uh, any compliance you bring by applying uh, APIs to be compliant with PSD2 or be a standard with uh, TM Farm uh, or in other industries uh, is something that, that you can uh, show as a binary function. You know, you're, we're compliant, so we're in business. So now this is uh, uh, th this is what my API program is bringing to the to the old platform. So if you want to go deeper on this, I, I gave a talk on uh, KPIs for APIs at Interface, and there is a replay um, at the conference. All right, the third power, the ability to uh, break walls. So um, what walls are we talking about? Well, let's go back to the experience that we said we wanted to, um, to create. Uh, this is uh, what the product manager wants to do, what the organization wants to deliver to the ecosystem. To do this, well, you need uh, bricks. You need to bricks in order to compose customer journeys. And you can only uh, find those bricks with APIs. Now, when people look at IT, they do not find bricks. They often find this, which is a wall, a monolith. The good thing about APIs is that we can break that wall. And how do we do this? Um, well, the first thing we can do is by unlocking value from existing assets. Uh, we talked earlier about databases. Well, you can turn any database into uh, uh, an interface that can be consulted with uh, a, a specific client and turn it into uh, uh, a building model. Same thing with your mainframes. You can turn these mainframes with clients so that you can have an API that is uh, consumed by other components of your uh, of your IT system and turning it into uh, a, to a brick. And same thing with anything. You can actually even scrap uh, with, uh, with scrapping client, which I do not recommend because uh, of license and uh, uh, durability issues. But, you know, as last resort, do not think of your legacy as... Uh, treasure that is locked because you can actually turn it into an API. And once it's turned into an API, it is part of the Lego bricks that you're going to be able to use in order to create the experience you need. Now, uh, other area of um, uh, leveraging um, IT is good news. Um, most, most new framework are totally based on APIs. So, um, Let's talk about the first one, which would be uh, uh, how you can turn a database into a stream. A, a database is uh, something centralized that uh, very often uh, poses issues when it comes to being consumed by several APIs. The you know one one way of addressing this 
is to turn them into streams as part of an event bus. The other thing you can do is to le leverage the possibilities of microservices who are intrinsically uh, able to, to uh, leverage uh, events as well as uh, providing REST interfaces. And to me, this is more like uh, uh, the plate for you to build upon your APIs. And uh, this is the, the good news here is that you can not only leverage existing treasures that you have by turning your legacy into APIs, but all the new assets that you're going to create uh, using uh, new frameworks are going to be API friendly so that you can play uh, uh, Lego with it as well. Uh, for this, uh, we we talked about uh, reusability and efficiency. Just wanted to give an example of uh, customer NG. They are um, so they're an energy uh, leader globally, and what they've done to uh, that led to efficiency was to divide by three their cost of consuming weather data by making sure that the APIs they were providing internally for weather information was reusable and known and discovered by all the organizations and domains that needed it. Um, so driving efficiency is uh, what, what uh, can happen once you've uh, broken some walls. All right, uh, the other uh, break wall capability is on the organization itself and APIs here as well act as um, agent of change. So this is the typical um, organization, which is you know, really uh, hierarchical. And this organization needs to interface with its ecosystem. So you would have different people uh, from different function that need to interface with that ecosystem. So that if marketing person needs to have a chat with a product person, they would need to uh, interlock via their hierarchy, which is extremely slow. And same with technical issues with marketing or sales. And sometimes it goes up to the CEO for arbitration. In the meantime, you've not really interfaced with your ecosystem. Your APIs have not progressed. The experience that you're providing to your ecosystem is not um, progressing. So you are not uh, providing value to your ecosystem. You're failing. This is not a business platform. So. APIs are here to break that. What we um, see and recommend in more and more organization is the ability to uh, embed the API uh, capabilities within lines of business with an API product team. So an organization would start with the first API product team uh, that is either financed by the line of business or by IT. And this product team will uh, uh, use all the best practice that we can think of in terms of uh, impact on the, the business of the line of business. Then you could have another team uh, emerging in another line of business, and they may not be uh, working much together, uh, which you know, we see, especially in the, in the largest organization. And this is at that point that you want to start creating a, a platform team that is in charge of making sure that best practice, uh, security, the design, uh, the portfolio management of the uh, of the overall APIs, that the catalog of services in place um, with minimal function at this federal level, uh, you want to make sure that there are economies of scale that are being created. And on and on, then you can start creating new lines of business based on APIs and cover many line of business this way as long as you've considered your API team to be a product team uh, that is embedded within a line of business. All right, uh, let's have a look at the fourth power of APIs, uh, which is to uh, create superstars. Once, you're, uh, once you've built all your system based on APIs, then you can think about being, uh, about attracting lots of consumers and developers to your platform. So here I'm sharing a, a few uh, uh, best practice on how to uh, monitor and grow your platform adoption. Uh, the main thing is internal alignment. This talk is about Clark and Superman to realize they are working on the same thing and that their uh, skills are complementary. 
Well, same in platform adoption. This is critical. You need to start by making sure that making sure that the KPIs uh, across the organization for your program are well understood. Then you, may, you need to make sure that the financial incentives that you're giving to different teams are actually aligned with your KPIs. That you create heterogeneous teams uh, so to focus on those uh, API as a product so that you, you reach success not only on the technical side, but also on the business side. You need to also make sure that the top management uh, make, uh, ensures that internal communication on the program that is ongoing for building your platform is uh, consistent and frequent. Like every week or every month, uh, top-down communication to everybody in the company on the progress of your program. And finally, uh, most importantly, you need to, uh, to look for early success. As part of the internal alignment, you cannot uh, consider that you've reached internal alignment and, unless you've been able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to reach some quick wins. Then you can work on the, your product experience. You need to make sure that the, uh, the experience you provide is unique. Um, one experience I like is uh, what Smalls did to, uh, to grow their uh, platform into 11 million Belgian uh, citizens. It's a government uh, platform. What they've done is to take uh, uh, an, uh, an old uh, previous application and make it mandatory for people to use their new platform in order to attract many users to their platform, which uh, is not something that everybody think about. Make sure that your use case is, uh, is unique and that everybody has to come to your platform when you want to start the adoption of your platform. Um, in your product experience, you need to make sure that it is designed for developers so that they, uh, it will be possible to get adoption by developers. And of course, you need to, uh, to adopt A-B testing for any feature you release. Now you're ready to go for a partner ecosystem. So we already saw that some uh, integrated partners need to be identified and integrated. Uh, so you need to do so. You need to also evangelize with uh, your partners. You need to make sure that your community of partners uh, and their developers are all aware of what you're building. Uh, and finally, you need to make sure that the experience that you will provide to your ecosystem is consistent, meaning interoperability. And interoperability can be decided based on uh, uh, a standard, common standard like FHIR for the healthcare ecosystem, for example, uh, or open banking for in, in banking, but it needs to be nurtured with a lab and uh, a joint experiment before uh, partner uh, uh, services are being released to your ecosystem. And finally, you can start outreaching because everything is ready. You have a product, you have a partner ecosystem. Now you can start marketing to uh, the masses with uh, you know, social and usual campaigns. You can uh, keep evangelizing to outside developers, uh, leveraging the experience you acquired by, by uh, working with your partners. You need to set conferences. And finally, you need to communicate with your uh, stakeholders so that they are aware of all the progress and difficulties you're facing uh, on your program and that they stay on board with you when uh, budget time will come. All right, just a summary, the four superpowers of APIs. Uh, it helps you uh, create an open vision uh, that is shared between the business people and the tech people super experience uh, that is incomparable compared to non-API uh, based experience. It allows you to break walls. So if there is one thing to remember, anytime you are part of an API team and you feel like you're facing a wall, do not forget that you have this superpower of uh, breaking walls on the IT side and on the organization side. And finally, it allows you to be uh, a superstar. And the success of your platform will be once your two personas will have uh, reconciled and that you will be thinking in terms of business platform and technical platform at the same time using that same language. And this is the kind of language I wanted to uh, share with you today. That's fantastic. Thank you, Eric. 
Um, how, how can people get in touch with you to follow up after today? Um, best Reach is, uh, it, yeah, either on LinkedIn uh, or Twitter. Okay, wonderful. Um, fantastic. We've had people in the uh, group chat already asking for copies of your slides today. So um, okay. really hear the chord there. Um, uh, so that'll be great when that goes up. Um, the, the, um, we are running out of time though, so I won't be able to ask you any questions. Uh, but in the chats, there were just some comments on some of the examples that we give and some um, suggestions there for uh, for finding some like more startup examples. For, so it'd be great to hear your perspectives on some of those discussions. But thanks, Eric, I'll invite you to leave the stage now.